So if you've been paying attention to professional tennis recently with any bit of a keen eye, you probably noticed that one of the best players in the world right now, Carlos Alcaraz, is still playing in a shoe that's pretty old, the Nike Vapor Pro, the original, and not the Nike Vapor Pro 2. So why is that? And, and I think that question can even be further broadened in that why are there so many professional tennis players and basketball players playing in shoes that are, you know, two, three, four model years before the newer ones out there? You can see it in the basketball space too with all the players using Kobe shoes. And is that because shoes are getting worse and worse and worse in terms of their quality, manufacturing, and performance? Or are there other reasons? So let's find out. Now talking about Carlos Alcaraz specifically, you know, the Nike Vapor Pro coincidentally is probably one of the best shoes suited to Alcaraz's footwork. Number one, because of this lateral plastic clip right here. Now, a lot of people find this annoying. However, if you're Carlos Alcaraz and can have shoes made to your specific last shape, that's really not gonna matter. Now that clip does a lot for someone like him who plays up on the balls of their foot almost 100% of the time. That dude does not rock back on his heels hardly ever. I think his feet are in the air more than they're on the ground when he is playing. And someone like him who gets really low with his footwork and just has that lightning fast first reaction, that plastic clip is really nice and containing, but also super lightweight. Remember, Carlos Alcaraz is still a young dude. He has very fresh legs, probably using custom orthotics in his shoes. And a shoe that has this light of a wave of an upper with like this Nike Vapor Weave or Ripstop, whatever you want to call it, is just a really breezy feeling lightweight package. So when he's playing best of five sets, this is just not going to bog his foot down versus something like the Nike Vapor Pro 2, which is much more of a maximalist shoe. The Nike Vapor Pro 2 is much more, where is it? Is much more of an update to the Vapor Cage 4 than it is the Nike Vapor 10 or the Nike Vapor Pro. And someone like Alcaraz, who doesn't really need anything to protect his foot because because like I said, he's got young muscles, he's got young ligaments and bones. Uh, he's much more looking for the performance side of things. The next thing on the Vapor Pro line, as well as the Vapor Pro 10, is the plastic shank in the shoe. Now, a lot of people don't like this because it can crack easy, but for someone like Alcaraz, who can get new shoes all the time, it's really not an issue. Now, that shank on the bottom of the Vapor Pro, as well as Vapor 10, gives such amazing flexibility and degrees of freedom, which means that this shank will bend in pretty much any direction. And so for someone like Alcaraz who plays a true all court game, and like I said before, plays so low to the ground and get that really deep knee bend, he needs a shank that's gonna allow the shoe to bend really easily in multiple directions, versus on the Vapor Pro 2 where, well, number one, there really isn't much of a shank on it at all anyway, except in the Vapor 11 update, which is based Basically the same shoe, just a little bit more reinforcement on the midsole, but the foam is so bottom heavy and the rubber is so bottom heavy. Hey, rubber and foam, there you go. But that rubber and foam combination is so heavy that the shoe just does not want to bend. Now that is really great for somebody playing on clay who's someone like me who needs a little bit more oomph under their foot or who wants something really stout and bottom heavy under their foot so you're not going to sprain or roll then it's phenomenal. Or just something to protect the forefoot because of the Zoom Air unit encased in the Vapor Pro 2. But like I said, when you're someone like Alcaraz, you just don't need it. You just much more want that lightweight, breezy feeling and something that's gonna give you all that flexibility. And that's why Alcaraz, at least to me, is in that shoe. But I think the, the bigger question is, is why are so many pros playing with older shoes? And that question can be answered pretty easily just by looking at the Vapor Pro versus its predecessor, the Vapor 10. Now these shoes have pretty much the exact same mid and outsole. You're standing on the exact same shoe. The only thing that's different is, is in the uppers. And you have scores of people just saying how awful the Vapor Pro is. When this came out, this shoe was just hated by so many people, even though I put it in one of my top five lists, I got crucified in the comments section. And now you're starting to see all these people that still wanna play in the Vapor Pro versus the Vapor Pro 2. It all comes down to, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Midnight in Paris, it's an Owen Wilson movie, but he kind of makes that comment that every generation thinks the generation before it was the best, right? So everyone who like kind of grew up on the Vapor 10 or, you know, started really playing hardcore in the Vapor 10 thinks this is the best shoe. Everyone that started playing in this thinks the Vapor Pro is the best shoe. And I'm sure a lot of people that are playing the Vapor Pro 2 think that's going to be the best shoe and the next shoe from there is going to be the worst. Now, there is also another big reason and that's because in professional tennis, professional basketball, 
millimeters count. The most infinitesimal margin can mean the difference between winning or losing, and especially on somebody's serve. The weight of a shoe, the profile of the shoe can really affect at what point you are contacting the ball on your toss and on your serve. So I know a lot of people get a medical exemption to you know, not use one shoe versus the other because number one, yeah, they're straining their lower back trying to serve differently. The, the shoe feels differently. Their lower back can start to hurt when they're going to, between shoes. And speaking of medical exemptions, if you are someone who has had lumps, bumps, bruises, just issues with your feet, ankle, lower leg, you're trying to get back on court and just have not been able to get a good answer because you've not been able to find someone who lives and breathes this community like you and I do. I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting in the description below. There's a link to that down there. We can go one-on-one, -on -one, try to figure out something that is best for you and your game. All right, back to the conversation. But number two, their game just gets affected because if it's either superstition, if it's just a grooved stroke or just something that you're used to, you don't want to give it up. Belinda Bencic was using an old pair of Nikes up until she switched to Asics. Yannick Sinner is still playing in the Zoom Zero, even though, I, I mean, the Zoom Zero is okay. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering, but he grew up on it. He developed his game on it and that's the shoe he wants to use and he's probably not gonna switch until he finds something that is very comparable to that or he has a long enough time to break in or get used to a new shoe. So I see all these new basketball shoes come out in the off season or toward the tail end of a season. It's because that's when a pro player can get used to that new model and their jump shot's not gonna get thrown off. It, it really just, a lot of times comes down to what you're used to, what you like, or just kind of what nostalgia tells you because if it were me, I'd be playing in the Reebok Fig Jam all day, every day, because this is the shoe I grew up on and my idol, Andy Roddick, had them. So, you know, a lot of times it's not necessarily one shoe being better than the other, it's just what you like. However, like in Alcaraz's case, there are really specific things in a shoe that can enhance your specific game. And that's why it is the best to find a shoe that really gels with you, not necessarily just one that your favorite player wears or just one you think looks cool because chances are if you're going that route to buy a shoe there's something else out there that is going to fit your game better that being said there are shoes out there where you know look good feel good play good and, and that definitely is a thing when the gp turbos came out i thought i looked cool in them they felt really good so the first time i played in them you know i was just running all over the court playing like crazy because i just thought they looked really neat the second or third time I played in them, you know, obviously my game came down to them and I was actually able to give them an accurate review, but it does just show you sometimes that, you know, the mind can play tricks on the body. So I would love to hear your thoughts. You know, what are kind of your favorite past shoes that you are still trying to find old colorways of or just old shoes of? I know I saw one guy at the Western and Southern Open say he was trying to find old Soul Court boosts because that's just what fit his game the best. And, you know, I kind of agree with that because those are still shoes that I still look for too. I'm coming after you on the resale shops. So, um, like I said, love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and if you want to see what shoes i find are like the best for every foot type game style and kind of injury you are bringing to the court right now make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below respect your rubber and foam especially this foam that's starting to get really old and hard and brittle because you keep using it and not throwing it away i'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse